Welcome everyone, and thank you for being a part of the Glory Day community. We're so glad you're here. If you're watching via YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications to cue you when there are new videos. And be sure to visit, like, and follow our Facebook page for posts, shares, and upcoming events and videos. Want to learn more about our ministry? Visit our website at gloria-day.com. You'll find ways to get involved, links to archived worships and helpful items for your spiritual journey, activities for the family, and more. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gloria Day community. We're so glad you're here and that you're joining us for worship. Welcome to worship. It's so good for us to be together. We're going to start with a number of announcements. First, this Wednesday, March 2nd, is Ash Wednesday, and we have a lot happening. We'll have a morning service at 1130 and an evening Water's Edge Ash Wednesday service at 630. Following these services on Ash Wednesday, at 1130 in the morning, through Lent, we'll have what we're calling midday prayer around the cross services with Teze music 
based on the music of a Taizé community in France, these short, repetitive songs that sort of get into your bones and allow you to pray through song in a different way. So we'll experience that together in the mornings during Lent. You'll get a taste of it if you're there on Ash Wednesday. We'll also feature a meal in the mornings after the 1130 services. And at night, starting this Wednesday, March 2nd, the silent auction begins. The auction is gonna run all through the month of March. There's a meal at five o'clock and the auction remains open until Water's Edge starts at 6.30 each night. It'll be set up in the fireside room upstairs and there are all kinds of great items to check out. This Wednesday, the meal is pasta bar. You don't wanna miss it. Get there on time so that you can get in line for the food while it's hot. On this same note, the auction, of course, is to raise money for our summer trips, and that summer youth trip to Michigan is still reopened for registration. So if you are a high schooler or you're going to be going into high school in the fall and you would like to be a part of this trip or you have a friend that you'd like to invite, don't hesitate. We would still love to have you. You can find more information on upcoming programming for Lent in the quarterly that will be coming soon. Also of note during Lent, we're going to have a book study on John Philip Newell's Sacred Earth, Sacred Soul, exploring the richness of Celtic Christianity through its history and some of its uh, unsung heroes that John Philip explores in each of the chapters. This will be led by Dave Berg and will be each Wednesday in March as well as April 6th. This will also be uh, from 7.15 to 8.15 p.m. downstairs in the Looking Within Center. We also have some updates about our families of Afghan evacuees. Thank you for your prayers for them and for your support and for your interest in what we're doing to walk with these families. Due to scheduling conflicts, we are looking for some more people to join one of the teams. So if you're available and interested, we would really love to have you. Contact Josh or give the church a call. This would be great to have your help. Also, we're looking to find someone to work with us here at Gloria Day in order to lead some kind of budgeting and finance classes that we can offer these families of Afghan evacuees. So if that is a gift that you have and you want to work with us, please let us know. That would be wonderful. Finally, we have uh, a party coming up on Sunday, March 20th, a New Year's party for these families. And we're seeking monetary donations to help go towards this party so that there's no cost to the families. Some of the dietary requirements are specific, and so we're not looking for anything in kind. We're just looking for monetary donations. So you can bring those by the church. If that's something you're interested in supporting, we would really appreciate it. Finally, some prayer requests. One of the families, uh, one of the dads, really needs his social security card. So if you could say a prayer for that, that would be wonderful. And both of our families are quite concerned about their families back home in Afghanistan. They are facing all kinds of unique challenges, everything from life under the Taliban to rising prices for food and gas. And so they would really appreciate your prayers, also that they would continue to find community here. More about that in the prayers this morning. Well, that's all the announcements that we have Thanks for being here. Welcome to worship, and let's continue together in song. Thank you. 
28 to 36. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took him, Peter, John, and James, and went into the mountain. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. <clears throat> they appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the things they had seen. So as we wrap up our sermon series on baggage claim, I'd like to close with an image of two different items, a box and a backpack. First, the box. It was about seven, maybe eight years ago now that we packed up one house here in Rochester and we moved to another. In order to, to move out of our old house, we had to sell it. In order to sell it, we had to make it look a little less cluttered. We had to make it look like we aren't quite the slobs that we actually are. And so we had to pack some stuff up in boxes and put it into storage. Now, we made several different trips, right? We took several trips to the dump. We took several trips to Goodwill. But then the stuff that we actually use and needed went into boxes and went into a storage unit because we weren't going to need it for the next two or three months while we sold our house. Boxes are good and important for different things. But so are backpacks. This backpack was a gift uh, for Christmas. I got it a few years ago and I, and I kind of love it because I, I put my laptop in there and I put some folders in there, my headphones, sometimes a snack. I will take this backpack with me as I, it, it's my carry on when I go on the airlines. It goes with me to, to the coffee house sometimes when I want to get some, some work, work done there. It's really important. I love it. It does the job for me. Look, but sometimes we need boxes, right? And sometimes we need backpacks. Both are important. Both are portable and are portable and, and help you move stuff. Both, uh, you, you can stuff stuff in there and, and you can save it for later. They, they both get those kinds of jobs done, but at the same time, they're, they're very different. You're probably not going to take this with you to the coffee house, right? When you, when you got some work to get done. You could do that, but that would be weird. You're also probably not allowed to take this as your carry-on on the airlines. In a similar way, you are not going to move your household with a little backpack like this. The one that you choose, the box or the backpack, is determined by the kind of journey that you're going to have. Whether you choose the box or the backpack, that's determined by the kind of journey that you're having, right? More about that in a little bit. Now to our Bible passage for today, and let's be real for a moment. This thing's weird. It is strange. It's one of the stranger stories in the scriptures, and that is saying some stuff because there's some weird stories in here. I mean, in this story, you have ghostly figures from that have been gone for years. They show up on the scene. You have a voice from the clouds. You have Jesus whose clothes turn kind of spangly and bling-worthy. It's a weird story, but let's hang with it and see what we can learn, see what we can discover. Jesus, he hikes up the mountain with his friends, Peter and James and John. And 
You know, have you ever hiked up to a mountain or a high hill? There's just something about the view. There's just something about the clarity and the perspective that you can get from there, isn't there? Anyway, they get to the top of this mountain and suddenly, like there's this mysterious vision that's described there. Heroes who have long since left the scene. You have Moses and Elijah and they suddenly show up and they're talking with Jesus. And then Jesus, his his appearance kind of changes. I love the way <laughs> I love the way it's put in chapter 9, verse 29. It says, His clothes are, and I do quote here, dazzling. I didn't know the Greeks had a word for dazzling, but there you go. His clothes were dazzling. Meanwhile, Peter and the guys, they wake up and they see this and they think it's great, right? And why wouldn't they? So Peter thinks it's great. He wants to make uh, three dwelling places, one for Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. In, in, in this translation, it's dwelling places. In other translations, it says tents. So he wants to erect three different tents so that they can stay there for a while, set up camp. I don't know, maybe he wants to have some s'mores with Elijah and Moses, but they are going to hang in there. He wants to stay there. And again, why wouldn't he? I'm sure he also wants to find out where he too can get some dazzling clothes. That's another conversation altogether. Then at this point, a voice comes from the cloud and it says, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. And all at once it was done. All at once it was done. The voice was quiet and Moses and Elijah were gone. And it was just Peter, James, John, and Jesus in street clothes on the top of this mountain. Again, it's a weird story, absolutely. But I think first and foremost, a story like this kind of feels like it's one about clarity, right? There's just something about the vision. There's just something about the view from the top of a mountain, isn't there? I think at this moment, Peter and James and John could begin to see clearly who Jesus really was, and I think that they could be, begin to have a sense about what was about to take place, about what was to come. They went down the mountain, and then they set on their way, and, and from, here, from here on out in the Gospel of Luke, in this book of Luke that tells the story of the life of Jesus, from here on out, it's a road trip to Jerusalem, a road trip to the cross. Scholars refer to this as the travel narrative. It's like the next 10 chapters until we get functionally to Holy Week and Good Friday and all of the rest. It's a single-minded focused road trip towards Jerusalem and the cross. And again, the cross, well, the cross is the place of suffering. They want to stay on the mountain where there's glory and there's good stuff happening and it's exciting but this is a journey towards the cross the cross is the place of suffering the cross is the place that we are reminded that suffering is not the end and we don't end in enter into suffering alone see the journey of lent the journey of this season of lent is a journey towards the cross this week we join Jesus and Peter and James and John on this, on the beginning of this extended road trip. And before we go, you just might need a box or you might need a backpack. As I said, the one you choose determines the kind of trip, the kind of journey that you're going to have. For Lent, some people really do like a box and they like to put things in the box and put it away for the season of Lent. They like to pack up this box and, and, and put it away for six weeks and, and after Easter, open it up and, and, and take the stuff back out. So you'll have people putting chocolate in the box or they'll be putting 
sweets, or maybe they're putting their social media in the box and putting it away, putting the TV in the box, putting it away. And for some reason that I'll never understand, some people put coffee in the box. I don't know. I don't know if that's the kind of journey that I'm going to be on this Lenten season, but people put stuff in the box. They put it up on the shelf. They put it away and give it up for Lent, as it were, and, and put it into storage for a season. Again, some people during Lent like the box. Others like the backpack. Now the backpack idea is that you take you take your backpack, you put a practice in there and you go for a hike and you take that with you for six weeks. So it's like taking something on for six weeks through the journey of Lent, a practice. Maybe you join a book study. When we have a the, our Celtic book study that's happening on Wednesday, still opportunities to be a part of that if, if you like, but maybe it's being a part of a Celtic book study or, or Maybe it's uh, taking on a new exercise program or meditating or making worship a regular part of, of your routine. It's a matter of taking on a practice, putting it on, and seeing where it leads you for the next six weeks. And look, there is no right or wrong answer here. Maybe... Maybe the box idea doesn't work for you. You don't want to give something up for this season. Well, then try the backpack. Try a new practice. Or maybe maybe that's not working for you. Then then try the box. Simplify your life and 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 try to enter into your Lenten journey in that way. Look, either way is fine. But the point the point is to travel a bit lighter. Travel with purpose, perhaps try out a practice, and see where the Spirit of God just might be leading you. See where there might be a nudging from God's Spirit in your life. See, today is what's known as Transfiguration Sunday. It's the day, day that Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, and we celebrate that. It's the, it's the very end of of the, of the season of Epiphany, it's right as we go into Lent and, and we celebrate that. It's, it's Functionally, it's that mountaintop moment. And so today is a day that we celebrate clarity and light and the view from the top of a mountain. We celebrate that we can, that we can have wonderful music like Chris and the band making the, the, the New Orleans jazz sound come alive today. We celebrate community and connection and all of that and the joy and so much more. And this week is Ash Wednesday, and that's when Lent begins uh, in full force. And as Lent begins this week, we remember that suffering is a part of our lives. Suffering is a part of the journey. But we also remember that we don't enter into this suffering alone. And suffering is not where the story ends. With our boxes and our backpacks all packed up and ready to go, we come down off this mountain and we enter into the valley. And who knows what we'll discover there? Who knows what we'll find on this journey through the valley and this journey through this season of Lent? But as we take these very next steps on this road trip, Together, as we take the very next steps on this journey together, let's, let's be in this. Let's travel side by side. Let's see what we can discover together. And let's have this big road trip toward the cross of Good Friday and the, and the promise of new life on Easter Sunday. Let's have that, that journey begin and let it begin now. Let's now pray to a God who listens and who responds in love. Lord Jesus, you took Peter, James, and John to pray with you on the mountaintop. Teach us now how to pray. Teach us to bring you our hopes and our fears, our dreams and our wonderings. Teach us to sit with you in discernment. Stay with us, whether we're at our highest high or our lowest low. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all times and places, you raise up peacemakers throughout the world. 
send some kind of manna, some kind of daily bread and quail to the people of Ukraine. Grant wisdom and sanity. Offer signs of hope and not despair. Lead us in the way of humility by the example of your Son, that peace might prevail in Eastern Europe and everywhere that war threatens to upend people's whole lives and worlds. How long, O Lord? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for refugees and immigrants, evacuees in America and around the world. We pray for those receiving quilts and kits from Lutheran World Relief. Especially we pray for the families we are privileged to walk with in our community right now. We pray for a social security card and for community. And we pray for their families still in Afghanistan. Grant them food, work, and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, you heal our every ill. Console those who are troubled by sickness, grief, loneliness, or discord. Grant respite to caregivers and relief to those who are suffering. Especially we pray for Scott, for Mike and Shirley, and for Bob. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hearts are full. In the midst of all that we carry, carry us. Promise us your love and mercy anew. As we walk into Lent, teach us again your ways of generosity, faithfulness, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus does indeed teach us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The auction is back. What is the auction? I'm so glad you asked. The auction is a silent auction to raise money to help offset the cost of our youth's summer trips. This is the only fundraiser we do and it's a fun, lively event with food, music, and full of people. Yes, COVID is still a reality. And with the help of our youth and our volunteers, we have been able to spread it out over the entire month. This allows us to keep the auction going and limit the time that we are together each day. Starting Ash Wednesday, March 2nd, from 5 to 6.30 p.m., we will have the first night of the auction. The auction will run in person Wednesdays and Sundays through March 23rd. If you're unable to join us in person, but you would still like to donate to the auction, you can give online and memo auction. For those of you who are able to join us in person, you can sign up to receive your bidder number on our website, through our social media, or when you arrive at Gloria Day on the night that you come. This is a great way to support our youth's faith development and to create community together. This summer, our high school youth are going to Cran Hill Camp in Michigan for a leadership development experience, and our middle school youth are going to the Quad Cities, Iowa for a service trip. If you have any questions about this, you can email Demery, who's our high school coordinator, at demerym at gloria-dei.com. Together, let's help our youth have an amazing experience in their faith journeys this summer. Gloria Day, you continue to let God shine through you in so many ways, and this is what it looks like to be part of a creative and caring church in our community. Ministry opportunities like our summer trips happen because of you and your generosity. If you would like to support the ministries at Gloria Day, you can give online or mail a contribution to church. This is how we are Gloria Day together and we are changing the lives of people in our community. Thank you for continuing to be the church without walls and thank you for sharing your hearts, your prayers, and your financial donations to the ministries at Gloria Day. Let's go. 
Well, it's been a great morning, hasn't it? So the special music, the New Orleans Jazz Ensemble. Um, we're so glad that you could join us this morning. We hope that we will see you again next Sunday as well at 930 on YouTube, through Facebook, on our website. Um, hope you'll find us and worship with us again next Sunday at 930. It'll be the first Sunday of Lent, so we're coming into that very special season, which will start Wednesday with Ash Wednesday and then continue on for some weeks moving towards Easter. So join us next Sunday. We hope to see you. And in the meantime, take these words of blessing and benediction with you. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.